Hi, brothers and sisters. It's Pastor Tim Henderson. What a day it has been. I, I had to have injections in my eye <clears throat> scheduled for surgery tomorrow. There was bleeding causing the retina to detach. I don't know if any of you know about the kind of surgery. They go in, they basically put a bubble behind, I, I'm not behind something, and then you could potentially have to look down for 16 hours a day for weeks. So I was going about my business. I was still driving with the patch on and, um, hey, I had one eye, praise God, drive by faith. Anyway, um, I, as I typically do on Wednesday nights, I prepare a meal for our youth and our youth are growing and they're preparing for a musical, uh, performance for our church. And in any event, uh, when I got there, a couple of the youth leader, while I was there, I was preparing the food. A couple of the youth leaders wanted to pray with me, and then the youth wanted to pray with me. And then when it was over, this was a short while ago, um, I was cleaning up, finishing cleaning up, and a, a couple from our church, Liz and Mike, they said, Pastor, can we pray with you? And we just started praying, and Holy Spirit moved. It was so sweet, and suddenly... There was like, under the patch, there was like this beautiful purple, light purple light that was bursting forth. And all of a sudden, there was just light everywhere. And I said, you guys, something's happening. And I took the patch off and I could see them so clearly. At the time, there was still like a floating shadow. It's, there's nothing now. It's completely gone. So my daughter's going to go with me. I'm going to drive myself in the morning. I'm scheduled at 945. I'll get there early. I'm sure the doctor will want to do the exam again and, and check everything out. But praise God, my eye is whole. I'm not going to need that surgery. God is faithful. And I just wanted to thank all of you who have prayed for me today. I felt your prayers. I appreciate it. I love you guys. See, what an amazing God we serve and, and what amazing family of God I'm a part of. And you guys are all part of that. And then something else happened, which... As glorious as this is, and it is glorious, and I praise God for it and give him all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. I I think I shared this already. I may have, I may not have, but I want to share this again if I haven't. But it did happen today, so I'm not sure. I was uploading um, on my phone. It was on the counter, and I, I wasn't doing anything with it. I was actually preparing a meal, and I... Suddenly the phone rang and it was a New Jersey number and the, the lady on the other end said, who is this? And I, I said, well, you called me, you know, so I answered her question and she seemed very nice. She was with a company in New Jersey. She said, well, we keep getting a call from this number and, and then it hangs up. And I said, well, my phone's been with me and this is my phone and I promise you I haven't called you. And I said, when has this been happening? And I'm thinking I wouldn't. I, you know, have you ever pocket dialed someone? I've done that. Some people on my speed dial. And anyway, she said in like the past 20 minutes and my phone for an hour was sitting on the counter. And there were a couple calls to me, but I put it on speaker because I was preparing food. So anyway, um, you know, it was the Holy Spirit obviously leading me. I explained to her, ma'am, I didn't do it. And she believed me because... She said, well, I believe you, but she said, isn't that weird? And I said, can I ask you a question? Are you a believer? And she paused and she said, well, well, yeah, I believe. And she said, but I'm not born again. And she went on to tell me how she's Roman Catholic and, and how she did all the sacraments, but not very religious. And so I had an opportunity to share my testimony with her. And when I was done, I went through the whole Roman road to salvation and I asked, I asked her, I said, do you believe, do you, and she believed, I mean, she was, <laughs> praise God, she was professing Jesus, she believes, she believes that he was born of a virgin, that he lived a perfect life, that he shed his blood on the cross, he paid the penalty for her sins, that he died and was buried for three days and on the third day rose from the dead. She believes in Jesus, and, and we had gone through what that means and, and how one is saved. And, man, I'm telling you, it was glorious. And my wife, because it was on speaker, was listening. And when I got off, my wife said, wow, do you see what happened? And I did see what happened. She said, honey, I, I said, I know. I don't, I don't know why the phone called her. 
I did have a friend later who says that, I forget what he called it, he said, but people somehow use your phone number and call people for marketing ploys or something like that. I don't know, but whatever it was, I'll tell you this. I have, I have been touched <laughs> by the Lord today and he healed my eye. I could not see and now I can praise God. And I had the privilege and honor of sharing the good news, the gospel, and, and it all, it was so random that that has never happened that way ever where someone has called me and said, actually, it's, it's only been friends and family and it, only a few times have I ever actually pocket dialed someone. But for this woman to call, she, she did the, I don't know what you call it, the redial. And it dialed me back and we actually talked and I got to lead her down the Roman road of salvation. I got to share the word of God and the good news and she professed Jesus Christ as Lord. I could hear in her voice as, as she was saved by grace through faith and understood because we went through it because I didn't want to leave her with that. I didn't want her thinking, listen, it's by sacraments. It's by any of those things. No way. The precious blood of Jesus that paid the debt for her sin, the grace of God and her faith in him, her belief in him, and all oh, brothers and sisters, it was so glorious. How awesome is that? Just today, to me, that's two incredible miracles that I've seen of God. He touched me and, and, and I can see I can be doing this tape without a patch on, praise God. And, and I'm out driving around doing what I need to do for the glory of God. And I rejoiced with the angels because a new name was written in the Lamb's book of life. Time is short. Jesus is coming very, very soon. I talked this morning about the U.S. pulling out of Syria completely. Do you know that President Erdogan of Turkey is already saying, and Trump had conversations with him to tell him, don't do it, because we're going to be pulling out of there. Don't do it. But he's already talk, talking about occupying east of the Euphrates. And, and why? Because of those Kurdish troops. Why? Why that area? Because it's rich in, in the natural resources. I'm telling you, Ezekiel's war is perfectly set. The stage is set. Now, based on some of the comments and, and what some of you say, you still believe that that's the Battle of Armageddon, and it's not. It, it's not the Battle of Armageddon. In fact, he who neither slumbers nor sleeps, the great I am, the eternally self-existing God in the persons of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, he will defend and protect Israel in this, when, when Gog and Magog comes down. And, and it's coming. Ezekiel's war is very soon. And you know, with, with the U.S. pulling out, can't you just see Iran and, and Turkey doing something, particularly Iran, doing something around Damascus? I'm telling you, we're going to see Isaiah 17 very soon. If we're still here, we're going to see Isaiah 17 happen. For all we know, it could be, bam, Isaiah 17. Bam, they come in from the north to invade Israel, God defends. And wouldn't it be something if all that happens simultaneously and boom, we're out of here. But I'm telling you, nothing further needs to happen for the great catching away. And I am so excited. You know, some have made comments saying, well, why wouldn't you want to be here? Why wouldn't you want, want to be here so that more could get saved? Of course, I want to see people saved. But nothing can detract me from wanting to be in the presence of my Savior and with him forever. He's the bridegroom. We're the bride. And he's coming to get us. Sorry, folks. We're, we're in that. It's like, an, it's like a wedding we might experience. You know, let's talk about the wedding week, right? I remember my bride. I love my wife, Karen. I remember the excitement that week leading up to the wedding. And there were so many last minute things to do. But, but there was a, an excitement and anticipation. And I'll never forget. Wow. I'll never forget. I didn't see my wife in her gown before she came down the aisle. I, I've never seen any woman so beautiful in my whole life as my wife was that day. And, and the anticipation of what was going to come as we went off alone. I'm not talking ignorantly. I'm talking about her being my bride. 
and the bridegroom's coming and the anticipation, the excitement of what's going to come. And the Bible says, encourage one another with this, with our blessed hope, because we're going to be with our bridegroom for ever. Oh, that's glorious. Well, again, I want to thank you all for praying for me. Your prayers were answered. Talk about the prayers of the righteous. Brothers and sisters, praise God. Praise God. I don't have to go through this surgery. God is so faithful. And you guys were faithful. And I just want you to know I'm praying for you also. I praise God for you. I love you. God bless you. Have an awesome rest of your day.